share ancient traditions with us. And we always thought they were just cool. The kids did too, because a lot of the kids didn't know some of these things. I think it was one of the kids who said, well, wear headdresses. So we got the headdresses and boy, when the, the crowd was, it was full. And Bobby was a sophomore and it's in Fargo. And we had the headdresses and the red, white, and blue balls. And we went around the court and the Shanley team quit warming up. <laughs> the whole crowd, the whole place got quiet. And I was just like, we got them. They're dead. Here they were playing all these big class A schools like Bismarck, Jamestown, Grand Forks, Fargo. And they have thousands of kids. And here comes little baby four gates. Oh yeah, we want a boy. There's this guy that just come out and trim our horses there. Big guy. We got to talking to him and he said he's from Hedinger. He said, I remember playing, he said, this game with the four gates warriors. He said this guy came out, scored 69 points against us. He said, all by himself. We're so embarrassed. He said, I don't even want to talk about that game. He said, that's my brother. <laughs> he said, what? Yeah. 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 Spin, he jump shoot. He worked really hard on his game, and he became a, a, a starter as a sophomore on what were uh, Fort Yates Warrior Dynasty teams. And to be a starter as a sophomore in that era was saying something about your athletic ability. He uh, basically was a coach's dream. Uh, he, he was tall with a lean muscular build uh, and long arms. He was a 6'4 freshman, looked like a, a deer that had just been born. He couldn't get his legs up. <laughs> <laughs> he was a big brother, but he was a sibling rivalry, but yet he was a teaching big brother. He would carry that with him on to his other careers, and he would use that to the best of his abilities. Bob drew on his own past of, you know, difficulties and, and overcoming difficulties and overcoming things that were tough for him. And he, and he related to kids wonderfully well. He could kind of see where I was at, you know, with all the chaos that was going on inside me. He could kind of like bypass all of it and just kind of touch the kid that was really, you know, going through all this at the time, and then, you know, he'd be okay. This was the last stop school for them before being kicked out. They had nowhere else to go. He made them respect themselves. And he said, you can't fool me. He said, I grew up on a reservation. And, he, and he'd be the first to tell you that if he's here. He was just so straightforward. And I think that's why they respected him so much, is because of the way he would talk to them. He did a lot of things that didn't have necessarily educational ramifications. Well, they did, because he made sure people weren't hungry. If a student needed to be put in treatment, he'd find a way, even if he'd have to dig in his own pocket. He saved kids.